All right. Welcome to the stream. We're doing it on a new computer this time because my desktop died. So it's on a laptop, but uh, we're going to be doing it via cloud server. So it should work out, but uh, we'll see. So yeah, because the computer died, I couldn't actually copy my setup over, but um, let me know if the audio levels are bad or I need to do something. That's why I have you here. Also the audio quality, uh, it should be fine. I used to use like a, a whole compressor setup before, um, but now it's just being compressed via a plugin. So it should work out. See if I talk this way, you can still hear, but it's a bit tinny. But uh, yeah. All right, let's get to it. We're gonna do Advent of Code. Uh, I think we do two days today. Um, thank you, little Annie. She is my biggest fan. She's also my wife, um, which is good. Uh, anyway, we're going to try and do two days today, uh, maybe three, you know, we'll stream for two hours. Like some years, like the first two days take only 30 minutes. So maybe we do three days or four days. We don't know, but we're going to get started. And uh, I hope you learn some Haskell. All right, let's get started. Land with the code day one. See, it's not green, so I haven't clicked it. But I did support. You got to support people that are doing things that you like. All right, day one. So let's see what is happening. Trebuchet. Something is wrong with the global snow production. Wow. And you've been selected to take a look. The elves have been have given even given you a map. On it, they've used stars to mark the top 50 locations that are likely to be having problems. You've been doing this long enough to know that to restore snow operations, you'll need to check all 50 stars by December 25th. Okay, we collect stars by solving puzzles. We get a puzzle, second puzzle when we unlock. This is all standard and ridiculous stuff. You're going to ask, try to ask why they can't just use a weather machine. Uh, why they're sending us to the sky. Okay, there's a lot of blank. Hang on, did you just say the sky? <laughs> it's a quite good, quite funny text. Um, when you realize that the elves are already loading you into a trebuchet. Oh my god. Um, they discover, okay, so calibration puzzle. Okay, has been amended. Oh no. Well, we was just really just excited to show off their art skills. They're having trouble reading the values on the document. The newly improved calibration document consists of lines of text. Each line originally contained a specific calibration value. Now we need to recover. On each line, the calibration value can be found by combining the first digit and the last digit to form a single two digit number. Okay. Huh? Let's just go. We're gonna make it simple. I am just going to copy paste it this time. So we're here on the server. And let's say here, module main where input is gonna be a list of strings input equals we are just going to do it this way and uh, let me see keep it simple you know need to go full parser day one okay uh, these are all strings now and we are supposed to uh, numbers and in Haskell that is really easy 
we import data dot char is digit and write main so main equals map yeah actually we are gonna say filter uh-huh map filter is digit input and let's print cub so we're gonna do ghc percent oh day one and we're gonna run day one but it's an end so we're only gonna run if it compiles let's see what happens compiling okay we got all the digits now we are going to uh, read at int a dot we're gonna read at int first uh, after we filter let's see uh, for this we actually need I think it's GHC 2023 uh, what was this thing called 2021 of course hey math class so what do I do in my PhD I study programming languages I am actually been working on program synthesis program repair which involves fault localization so finding out so you have a code base you want to figure out where the bug is uh, you want to replace pop you know suspicious locations with a uh, new code that's code synthesis and then you want to test it again um, we do this in a loop so I have a paper called proper which is property based program repair it's very cool so my goal with my PhD is uh, it's uh, so I mean the title is like type directed pro program re program repair I think but the idea is you know in a language like Haskell we have so much information already there like the types we have sometimes we have tests um, we have a lot of constraints everything we have but uh, we're not using all of it right so my PhD is all you know use, reuse recycle just make full use of all the stuff that's there all right we have the numbers now oh no uh, Ah, and then it's only the first and last digit. See, I ran it and it says uh, one, two, three, four, five. What will you do after compiler dev? I actually am not 100% sure. Um, but, you know, there are some high school shops out there. I could do compiler dev. And, you know, you can do a lot of just general. Like, if you know, if you know programming languages, you can. So the, the way programming language works are it's basically you take a problem, you design the language that describes the solution, uh, and then you write the program that it, in that language, right? To kind of make make it trivial to uh, to to do the stuff like here, right? We are actually saying map read filter, right? We we you're kind of we have a language to talk about lists and then we just use that to make this all very easy but yeah compiler dev uh maybe you know work for epic games uh, making that cool new language they have which i always forget the name of but it's very cool um, and then you know we can do o camel really open so it's either that or I just do a postdoc and kind of continue working on program synthesis uh, yeah let me see now we are going to before we read we are just gonna take the list uh, take first and okay so I mean it's gonna work okay so we don't need to do it Let's just say we're going to apply this function here, uh, which is going to say, you know, take the first of the list and do a X combined with last X's. Boom. 
do 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 all right and now i need to i need to do it like this okay so now we just take the first element and then we take the last element and we create a list of those two and then we read that as an int who oh, no. knew empty list let's go again to the oh, definition uh yeah so two digit number right so we want the first let me see um Ooh. okay so it might be the case that it's a single digit number so we are just going to do f uh, so we are gonna do and let's just write f out f is gonna be some function where f of a x is equal to x uh, so f x uh, let's see so with like a non-empty list uh, it's gonna be non-empty list is equal to uh, x comma last x is f of anything else is just that interested in graphics programming graphics programming is cool uh, oh yeah I have to do let I do like graphics I did, I, used, I did one graphics class. It's just uh, my problem with graphics is that it's quite hard to test. And then, because uh, you need like a good GPU. I, it's just a lot of work. Uh, I'm going to run super fast and just uh, make it work. Let's see. Now we're getting 72. Which is indeed, ah, so if it's M1, it's supposed to be X comma X. 142. J. X message. I do not know what you mean by J. Please explain. Okay. Always have an error that just uh... no J is not the uh... F. So a trick I learned recently is uh, if you're making an if you're making an uh, error message, it's good to have the name of the function that it's in in the message. It makes it a lot easier to find. Let me see. Uh, it's called uh, Epic Games Programming Language Verse. It's called Verse. It's quite cool. It's uh, it's not so. It's kind of like Haskell, functional. Uh, it's not lazy though, so I don't know. But um, it's got built-in constraint solving, so you can kind of say exists variable where, and you just define a bunch of constraints, and it will kind of branch out in multiple paths depending on the values that satisfy those constraints. Uh, and it's kind of Tim Sweeney's brainchild, and it's it's super cool. So it's like functional programming and prolog wrapped into one. I don't know quite how it works and also like constraint based programming is not my forte so I don't know I don't know why it's good but uh, prologue was quite 
uh, was quite popular in its day. So I just I haven't wrapped my head around it. Okay, so we did the we did the first one. Uh, now let's get our input. What is the sum of all the calibration values? Boom. A. Uh, actually, this is a lot of line. So let's the file here input set paste important in vim wow okay and then uh, so here we are going to And let part one equal, uh, in equal this. Okay, I think it's just like this actually. So, and let's do print part one example. You see if it still works. Yes, and now we do read file. Uh, into print dot part one dot lines. Read file uh, input. So now we read the file and we're going to take the file and take all the lines in the file and then we're going to run part one on all the lines and then print it. Actually, you know, we got to be on. We're going to run time on this. Just going to write the memory and stuff. 55816 in I think this is one uh, millisecond let me see I I oi something I did wrong there let's just say time ah 11 milliseconds not bad if I do say so myself uh, but let's see if we're actually oh Correct here. Uh, five five eight six eight one six. Boom. Part one. Easy. Twenty minutes with all explanations of my PhD and stuff. Maybe we can do three days today. We'll see. Uh, in this exam, okay. Part two. It looks like some of the digits are actually spelled out with letters. Oh my god. This is crazy stuff. Okay. 16 even. Wow. Let's see. Okay, so two nine eight two three one three two four nine eight seven one wait. So this is one eight and then four. Yeah, okay, so it's just six, right? It's not like... Because he's not taking like 16 and then turning that into one six and then taking the last of that. You know, let's just see what happens if we... Uh, if we do it with... Uh, let me see. Sample two. 
So here it's like, you know, now we should be getting a parser or something, but uh, I don't feel like it. We gotta look up the light. And uh, I think I think we're gonna get away with it. Okay, let's okay, write the replacement function REPL string to string. We were planning to use Haskell, but this part changed your mind. But why? Um, I think we can do like a pattern match here. So we're going to do stir. And we're going to say a case. So we're going to say a... One take uh, length one uh, of string is gonna be equal to. Let me see a. Uh, Do 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 do. Uh, I think it's not span. Using JavaScript. Wow. That is crazy. Uh, no, it's split. Yeah. So then we can actually. No. Okay. So I want into. So I want a. You know, a list of A's to int actually i think it's int to list of a's to a comma a split at yes split at this is gonna be equal to um one and then REPL rest so x x is okay and now we are going to copy paste this it's 10 times Uh, it's what you got uh, to I mean there are probably better ways to do it. Uh, feels like they would take time one two G three four five Six, seven, eight. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't drive you crazy, but it's also good exercise, you know. How is this? How is this easier in JavaScript? Is my question, right? Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Otherwise, we are just going to do X, REPL X's. You know, there's probably, we, you, we could say something about skip many or something like that.
I don't know. Feels a bit much. Bunch of for loops. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's see here. Uh, print map REPL example 2. Let's just see what happens. Non exhaustive patterns. Uh, because REPL. We didn't catch the. We didn't have the base case. 803. Okay. Seems to work. Map. Part. What if we do now part one? On the example. 281. Keep switching to the wrong tab, which is exactly the right answer here. The input is the same. Let's just see what it does. Gonna be slow? No, 55 milliseconds. Not bad at all. But let's see if we still got it. Maybe we messed up some base case. It's too low. Damn it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it was correct for the example, but not for the real input. Mm -hmm. That is messed up. I want to align all these. So it worked. It replaced everything. But then it didn't do the... Ah, it's saying eight wo three. Do you think that is supposed to be like eight and two and three or just eight two three? See one three two one four. So we can we can do it, you know, but uh, if we change it like this, then it's gonna two one nine. I think it might work. Let's just copy it and see. That was the right answer. Cool. We just had this tiny where it could be part of two numbers at the same time. Boom. 30 minutes. How do I debug Haskell? 
there is a module called debug.trace. I do go it. And then it's going to print out all the lines, right? Um, and then, you know, if I... So I do a lot of just uh, debugging by just looking at the input and how it's behaving. But uh, um, there's more stuff. I want to make it faster. There's a tool called Profiture. So you basically generate a profile with like uh, with stuff. Uh, so you generate a program, you can get a heat map, and you can figure out what is slowing it down. There are more advanced debuggers, um, but I usually don't have to resort to them. But so yeah, so that's a, that's a trick here. Like here, the map, the REPL is a pure function, right? But this trace function is basically doing unsafe perform IO print on the value. Um, so you're printing in a pure function, right? Which is very nice. So you can see every value that's going on. Our Day one, 30 minutes. Let's keep this marathon going because we have some catching up to do. Day two. Module main where? Let me just prefix it right away. Return to the advent calendar. Uh, let's go to two. All right. But did that answer your question, Matlash? Like the trace show ID? It works quite well, actually. Let me see. You're launched high into the atmosphere. The apex of your trajectory just barely reaches the surface of a large island floating in the sky. It's quite cold, but you don't see much snow. Okay. Oh, it's snow island. There's no snow there though, uh, so you have to walk. Oh, now we're playing a game. Okay. As you walk, the elf shows you a small bag of some cubes, which are the red, green, or blue. We will hide a secret number of cubes that he's gone in the bag. And you can also figure out a number of information. Also, like, okay, the elf will reach into the bag, grab a handful of cubes, show them to you, and put them in the bag. He'll do this a few times per game. You play a f several games and record the information from each game. Each game is listed with ID number, followed by a semicolon separated subset of cubes that were removed from the back. Three red, three blue, four red, one red, two green, six blue, two green. Okay. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So he shows us, I guess he grabs a handful, and then in the first handful there was 3 and 4, and then he puts them back into the bag. And then we, we see them again. Three sets of cubes were revealed from the bag. Three blue and four cubes, second one, yeah, exactly. Two green is six blue. The third set is only two green cubes. The elf would like to know which games would have been possible. Which? Wow. Oh, okay. Would have been possible. Because so one, two, and five would have been possible. Game three would have been impossible. Twenty red. Elf showed you fifteen blue. Okay. Uh, it seems okay. Do, 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 do. I like this playlist, by the way. This is a Stream Beats lo fi Christmas music, and it is DRM free, so I'm allowed to stream it, uh, which is important. You are not allowed to break the law while streaming. But, 
like when I actually not usually listening to lo-fi I'm usually listening to like pop songs that I've heard a million times before um, and then I'm just vibing you know but sadly if I did that on this oh you can't hear the music oh that's sad I think it's because uh, I misconfigured something. Uh, the music is supposed to be on the correct one. Ah, we'll figure it out for the next stream. Because I don't want to put it on the main one because it might uh, get there. There's no music. And put it a bit higher. We'll see. Because it, it showed up in the recording. Anyway, I gotta figure out the Twitch VOD. We'll, we'll figure it out before next time. It is good though. Got, uh, a very lo fi Christmas by Harris Heller on uh, Stream Beats by Harris Heller. Spotify. It's quite good. Let's see. Let's parse this. Uh, parse. So data game equals game. So the GID is gonna be an int, and then a hands. It's gonna be a list of hands, and we're gonna derive show for this, and then a data hand oh so I so I have, it's a list of hand not a list of hands this equals hand um a blue um red green all right Thank you for hanging around, Matlash. I love it when people actually interact also. That is why I am doing this stream, teaching, and just having company while programming. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, say deriving show. So parse. And this is going to take a string to a game. Parse. Okay. Uh, first, we are going to say string. Okay, it's going to be a string, and we're going to do a game space is split at length game space okay, and uh, we're gonna split out the game length game space of string. Then we are going to uh, say uh, id id string rest is gonna be take. So it's gonna be span. Again, we need import. Data dot char is digit. So we're gonna take while is digit. We're gonna span. So we take until it's not a digit. And uh, is digit. Let's name this uh, rest. Now this is gonna work. I believe in the cards. Uh, might not work though. Okay, we're gonna believe. I think it's gonna work, the scoping here, but I'm not entirely sure. So, we're gonna span is digit rest. No, this is gonna loop, sorry. Rest one, rest two. No, let's believe. We believe. Okay, and then we are going to uh, say rest is a drop. 
two. Uh, of is equal to now let's just say here game comma string because I, I just want to see what's going on here uh game read ID string GID is equal to read at int uh, ID string and equals empty. We're just not gonna do that. Comma rest. Okay. Now main is gonna be main equals print parse map parse example now let's do this again but this time it's day two one two three ah so the scoping did work out very nice uh okay so now we're gonna do a Actually, Haskell is kind of annoying. It doesn't have the split at function. Uh, so we, we can't just split at the semicolons directly. We actually have to write that function split on char a string. This is strings. Split on C S T R is equal to um, a, so we're just gonna say here um, uh, our R S is gonna be span not dot equal to c so while it's a not equal to the character we are going to take a string and then we are going to say a r Split on CRS. Okay. Uh, if if it matches and there is something at the end, then we do like a split on. C empty is equal to empty, split on C is true, is equal to true. Let's see this, a uh, turn this into the strings, and I am going to split on. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, it does seem to work. Except it... Uh, It, it has spaces in it also, but that's okay. Okay, uh, now, so, a, uh, hands, 
hamsters is equal to split on a semicolon rest and this is gonna be hands equal parse hamsters the parse okay and now we are gonna not do this okay then parse hand stir take a string into a hand parse hand stir is equal to okay first we do uh, we clean it up right so x x is is drop a while is space stir okay import da 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 char is space i think it's just called is space let's see uh space yes okay so first we clean up Okay. Else is going to be split on and then comma. And we are actually going to say map drop while is space. Okay, so we're not just going to do this directly actually. Space after we split on the axis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me add define addition for two hands. Add hands. And a B1, R1, G1, and B2, R2, G2 is equal to hand B1 plus 2, R1 plus R2, G1 plus G2. Uh, so now I'm going to say... Parse, parse simple hand string. Okay, so now we're gonna say a uh, x s is gonna be take while okay, span is digit string. So H G. So a uh, num x is now this is going to be equal to case x is of space green. It's going to be hand uh, green is equal to read at int num. Red equals zero, blue equals zero. Blue, blue, green, red, red, blue, green. Okay, then we do. So we're gonna drop while is space and then parse simple hand. Okay, so now we have a list of elements of hands. 
So now we're just going to say fold L prime add hand. And let's see, the empty hand is hand 0, 0, 0. It's going to be equal to fold add hand hand 0, 0, 0 uh, on else. Okay, I think we got it. Let's run it. Thirty-eight. Yeah, I just forgot to do this. It should be add hands. Full L prime is not defined. Okay. Ding 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 ding. Variable learn scope axis. Ah, uh, stir. So this is actually map parsand. Nice. So three, great. We managed to parse all the hands. Hey, you don't need to go to a full parser for uh, for this. Uh, so Jamie defined so uh, blue one six three two one two. Yeah. Okay. So these are correct. Okay. Uh, now let's just define. Possible game to pool. Let's say hand to game to pool. Okay, possible hand. Let's actually say here a uh, Green equals G, red equals red, blue equals blue. And then we have the game. Uh, game, we don't care about the ID, we care about the hands equal hands. Is equal to all possible hand hands a uh, where possible hand of a, a hand a green so it's it's blue red green right i should really have it i don't know what i was thinking okay red green blue Let's just write here hand RGB possible hand a R R C G C B C is equal to a R C lesson equal to R and Let's just say all, uh, we can actually just say and uh, and then we want GC to be less than equal to G, BC to be less than equal to B. Okay, so we map and then we filter uh, Possible, and then we do GID. So, which of these games are possible? Oh, right. A uh, filter. And what was the example? Hand. Twelve, 
13, 14. Let's see. 1 to 5. Let part 1 equals sum. And now we're going to say do, and we're going to say print part 1 example. Eight. Okay. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, puzzle input. Input. Page stitch cancel. Let's see. Uh, we forgot to do set paste. Maybe we. Uh, don't manage to parse some of these, but that's okay. Okay, now... Let's do a read file input into part one dot lines print two six eight three and no parsing errors either not bad all right day two part one done Took a bit longer, parsing took longer, but you know, we're still, we're on track, we're on track. Okay, uh, what is in, okay, as you continue your walk, that post is like, in each game you played, what is the fewest number of cubes of each color that could have been in the bag to make the game possible? Mm-hmm. Let me just take the maximum, right? Let me just see. Uh, fine. Uh, add hands. Now we're going to do max hand. Hand. R1. G1. B1. And R2, B, G2, B2, it just has to be in the same order. So you go hand, max, I think it's just max. Uh, maximum is for the list, right? Yeah. Max R1, R2, max G1, G2, max B1, B2. So now we are going to say, so let's see, a map parse part two. Okay, we're going to do print um, map folder max hand and zero zero zero. Over the games. Let's just see what it says here. Uh, this was going to be example. Three, two, four, 
4 red, 2 green, 6 blue. 4 red, 2 green, 6 blue. 1, 3, 4. 1, 3, 4. 20, 13, 6. 20, 13, 6. 14, 3, 15. 14, 3, 15. 6, 3, 3. 6, 3, 2. Yeah, okay. So it's correct for all those. Okay, the power of a set of cubes is equal to the numbers of red, green, and blue cubes multiplied together. The power of the minimum set of cubes in game one is 48. And RGB. R times G times B. This is running, uh, sorry. Right. Forty eight, twelve, fifteen, sixty. Okay, and then some. Two eight six. Since he let so to so a dot here and dot here. Let's see. For each game, find the minimum set of cubes that must have been present. What is the sum of the power of these sets? It's gonna be a big number, right? Let's see. Four, nine, seven, ten. Boom! Day two done. In one hour. Let's see. So we're catching up, we've done day one, we've done day two, let's do day three, and then we call it a day, right? I think we should be able to do day three today also, but I don't want to sleep too late, but uh, yeah, it's good, we're catching up. You and the elf eventually reach a gondola lift station, he says they're going to lift the water source. He was like, okay, this is their problem, they're not moving. Try to reach the elf with a wrench. Uh, it's not working, the lift, okay. We're gonna help fix the lift, cool. The engine part seems to be missing from the engine. But nobody can figure out which one. Let me actually see. Now we have a short break. Uh, and I'm just gonna try and figure out the... The uh, POD. Ah, I messed it up. Uh, so the VOD for this one is not going to be possible. So, what it's supposed to do. Okay, I see. We're going to do it like this. And like this. Now you should hear the music. But, uh, yeah, so what I was doing is I was sending just the music to Twitch Video On Demand. Um, but now 
then that was exactly the opposite, I think. So you want to send uh, you want to send everything except the music to video on demand. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was just sending the wrong thing to the VOD. So, sorry about that. If you're watching this on the VOD, you did not have any audio until now. Um, and I'm surprised you're still watching. But you should have a... It should work now. Let me lower the music again. Because now it's working, right? So it's not... Uh, it shouldn't be too high. Okay. Music is working. Um, yeah. So, but I'll upload this to the YouTube. So, we just finished day one. It worked out great. Um, but, yeah. Sorry about the audio mess. On the VOD. The stream has been okay, except there was no music. Now there is music, and everything should be correct. Alright, let's go do day four. Okay, uh, if you can add up all the part numbers in the engine schematic. The engine schematic, your puzzle input, consists of visual representation of the engine, and lots of numbers and symbols, but apparently any number adjacent to a symbol even diagonally is a part number should be included in your sum okay uh, two numbers are not part numbers because they are not adjacent to symbol 114 and 58 every other number is adjacent to a symbol and so is a part number their sum is 4361 okay that is a... Uh, this is gonna be a mess. But, let's see. Let's see how it works out for us. Ah, but we're doing good. We're doing quite good. Uh, make your day three. Three dot HS. Uh, no. Dot HS. Language GT 2021 module main where example equals and then we just oh you know uh, paste it in is a list of strings. Should be now. We have got to we gotta read the numbers first. And so and then we gotta figure out the symbols. Gotta get the ranges and something like that. Okay, let's see. Let's just get the symbol locations first. So, um, a symbol looks. It's just going to be a list of strings to list of uh, int symbol looks 
nothing is equal to nothing symbol logs x x is equal to sl of x symbol logs x is okay where sl of x is equal to I think in data.list is like a index function somewhere. LM indexes. Uh, find indices. Nice. Equals uh, find indices. Let's import data.list find indices a f x so f of x is equal to a case x of let's say a is digit x equals false If it's a dot, it's gonna be false. Let's see. Data char Haskell. I think there's a function called just like alphanumeric. Is alpha num? I think that's okay. Uh, is alpha numeric? So we're gonna do these. Okay, now let's just uh, find all the indexes. Do uh, print symbol logs sample. Day three. Ah. Okay, there's an error on the input here because I didn't put the start list thing. Okay, let's see. Uh, is digit is alpha num. Is alpha num, right, I need it. Like this. Oh, and this is not finding this is X is it's finding this is s so three six three five three and five okay dun, 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 dun. Now we are going to um, now let's find uh, so symbol logs and so instead of doing this we're gonna return a list of pairs. We're gonna say symbol logs string to a list of pairs of ints. So a string, and this is gonna be sip width. Um, So we're gonna do here uh, zero 
and then stars and then it's gonna be a um, sip with SL and this is gonna be I here map I comma okay Okay, we're doing something wrong here. Um, so sip with is gonna get the index. And uh, okay, let's see again the error message. Uh, couldn't match type. This is supposed to take an int and a string and it's going to return me a list of Ah, I need a concat So 1, 3, 3, 6, 4, 3, 5, 5, 8, 3, 8, 5 Okay Um that's the location of the symbols. Now let's have the... Um, ...line. Empty equals empty. Let's just see here. Okay, is it gonna be string? So let's just go again. Now X is drop while mm. X area is span uh, not is digit. String. So we drop until we reach the digit, and then we um, why uh, why's is going to be span is digit axis. Okay, so we're gonna have parse line parse line prime zero string where okay now we span is digit uh, parse line prime so we're just gonna keep the running index here. Okay, and uh, so and this is gonna return um, so the string itself uh, is equal to okay. So we're gonna have the read at int of y. We're gonna have the start of the string, which is length x plus i. Length x plus, I think let's just do like this, i plus length x. And then the end of the string is i. Start index is length of x. So this is going to be a... 
end index is si plus length of y so i plus si i plus si plus ei um It's actually just gonna i plus length x and the si and ey concatenate it with parse line prime uh, ei string no wise okay and uh, Let's just, oh, I need one more here. Parse line prime empty list equals empty list. Dollar map parse line example prelude dot read no parse okay now we're going to debug okay So four six seven one one four, uh, and then it's just uh, <laughs> okay. Um, this is gonna be fine. If there is no empty string, cars line prime. Do we even? I don't think so. Let me see. Okay, let's do it. This one starts at zero and ends at three. I think we're doing okay here. Let's remove this trace show ID. So four, six, seven starts at zero and ends at three. Well, actually, let's uh, print the example also. Map and print example. Okay, so it starts at zero and then see zero. Huh? Key bind. Also, now I got to test the alerts. Um, I hope they work for the rest of you. So it starts at zero, so and then this is zero, one, two, and then three. Uh, I think it should be. Okay, zero, one, two, three, four. And this one starts at five, six, seven, and then it ends at eight. Um, I think it should not be like that. I think it should be end index minus one. I mean, it's correct for the... It's correct like this. So it starts at zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Zero, one, two, three. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, 
and then 35 so 0 1 2 and 3 okay um I think we should have like a running window. Ha! Huh. Go the quality keep mind. Some Icelandic on stream. That's good. I'm Icelandic. I'm also wearing the Icelandic colors. Representing. Um so what I'm seeing now is that it's probably super bad to actually So like so the two symbols can only touch one above and one below, right? So I should have like kind of a sliding window of three. Uh, otherwise, we get like quadratic, quadratic, quad, quadratic. Yes, happening. Okay, so. Let's just uh, create the window function. Window string to. It's gonna be take a list of strings to a list of list of strings, and then we just do everything within the window. Window of a uh, x y z x is is equal to uh, it's going to be x x y z uh, concatenated to window y z x is. And if we don't have three things, that's gonna be window. Anything else is just empty list. Let's see, uh, print windows window example then my first yeah exactly and now we're gonna operate on each window and we're uh, not gonna kind We are just gonna, and we're not gonna do the. We're just gonna have a. It's a list of ints. Okay, and then we just remove this, we remove this, we remove this. And then it's not going to be sip with, it's just going to be L string, SR our strings. And let's see what we get now. Yeah, exactly. So now we have the, we just have the things. So it's probably going to generalize somehow and I'm going to have to work through that again but I just want to see what's gonna happen now okay so um, let's see operate go so solve window okay so it's gonna be L1, L2, L3. Uh, L1, L... So, let's see. 
window win win w is equal to uh, so where uh, so symbols s1 s2 s3 is equal to symbol logs window and then a uh, line the lines are going to be l1 l2 l3 is equal to map parse line let's just write it like this actually and then then we have to write map here also map map parse line w let's just write here I'm just going to see a uh, print. Let's just look at the first window. comment these out so first one says that there's one symbol in line two now let's see here uh, we have to say uh, touches so we're gonna have the symbol which is going to be just an index SE and then we're going to have the number we don't care about the number itself but we're going to have the uh, number start and number end it's equal to so SE is uh, so NS less than or equal to SI and so it's supposed to be within the range, right? And S1 less than or equal to any. Okay, so for the... So we're going to solve window part one. This is not going to generalize, but uh, let's just see what happens. I just to know more about the second first okay so here um, this is so first of all so we're gonna be filtering out the symbols um, okay so uh, okay F first we have all the touches so line one can only so line one can touch line one S1 and S2. Uh, line two can touch all three. And line three can touch S2 and S3. Okay, so um let's see, so uh for S1 we're gonna say map touches a so check one let's see check check one is gonna be map we're gonna say map touches a one map touches a one so we're gonna concatenate that with map Touches L2. So there's going to be a list of functions.
Okay. Um... Okay, so, and then check one, where f's equal, okay, so then we have to check, and it's going to be a list of functions, so we're going to see filter, and we're going to take a function, and so any f f s. We're just gonna apply the functions. There's an we could, I we could probably use dollar here also. Any dollar f s s one s two. C2 equals filter. Uh, let me see. C2, and then this is going to be S3. Uh, L1, L2. This is actually, yeah, okay, so we can just map touches. L1, L2, L3. Map touches L1, L2, and then C3. It's the same, but it's just a uh, let's see. So C takes in. Um, symbol list and uh, wait so it takes in a number list and symbol list and it's gonna say filter any dollar fs concat sl oh, then let's just say Simple list where fs equals map touches. No, this is going to be number list and this is going to be symbol list. Okay, and then uh, c1 is equal to c of uh, l1, l2, uh, c, and uh, S1, uh, S2. C of L1, L2. Oh, hey, Oscar. I am hard coding challenge for day three now, actually. So we caught up. Uh, it's not going to generalize, probably, but... I, I don't know what part two of day two is going to be. So, um, so this one takes a, um, int, int, int. Ah, no, sorry. So this is actually, actually, it's not like this. So it's just S1 here. And then this is S2. And this is S3. We don't want to check all of them. Yeah, it's kind of been, it's been a bit hard actually, but uh, we've been doing fine. We've been doing quite fine so far. We should have it because now we're gonna get duplicates of the numbers. It would be a lot better and could kind of reverse this. 
Um, so it's going to say, you know, L1 is going to be touched by the symbols in S1 and S2. L2 is going to be touched by the symbols in S1, S2, and S3. And L3 is going to be... Touched by S2 and S3. Let's see. Okay, so now we have a the number list. I think this will work. It's gonna be C2, C3. Ah, but we're still gonna get duplicates of the numbers because it's uh because it's per window. Let this window. Yeah, it didn't work. I I messed this up. F F S um, Let's see. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a bit hard today. Uh, Maybe I'm messing it up by doing the window. Because um, I, I don't need a window for the... So I should really just do each line. And then... Um, just check the ones that it touches. Let me a long time on this, but uh, it, I don't think it's working. Let's just uh, let's look at it all again. The, what do we what do we have here? Let's actually do a map map m print. Um, What did it say? Oh, right. Okay, so this first is the symbols, and we have the, then we have the lines. Okay. Hey, why do you use Haskell? It's functional. I like to think about things in a functional way. It's got a good type system, so I can uh, write down a partial specification of what I'm thinking of. And it's lazy, which means that you need to be pure. And you can kind of work easily with infinite data structures. That's why I use Haskell. Okay, so uh, let's see. We can still use the windows. Um, hmm. 
Does anyone do anything? Yeah, I like to think about things functionally. I also like to have things... I don't want to map it directly to the machine. I want to be declarative. I just want to say what I want and then... Uh, I want... ...that for me, right? But it's an internal debate. Rust is good for... Uh, ...where you really need to map it directly to the machine. But uh, the type system is not as expressive in Rust. So we got that going for us. Uh, okay, let me just see. Uh, so I'm just first. We're going to function. Let me take in a solve line. Takes in a string, and it takes in a list of like simple locations, and returns a list of numbers in that line. Okay, solve line is equal to where where um, nums is equal to parse line. Uh, let's go line sims numbers is parse line ln and um, then we have this touches function okay and now we're gonna say So filter any F so we have a number any F and uh, FS nums Uh, n at i comma number and then we're gonna map in okay uh, fs is equal to map touches seems Touches as a this thing we're not gonna use it anymore. Okay, so let's see. Um, we're gonna do uh, FSL one. It's going to be a concat map, concat dollar map symbol logs dollar take three example. And then L1 is equal to be take one example. And then we're going to print solve line L1 FS L1. Um, let's just take head here and see example oh. some uh, SSH glitches happening yeah so it doesn't touch any symbol on that line okay so now we are 
just have to um, chop it up into pairs. So let's go. Uh, So let's uh, have um, solve and <laughs> so now we're gonna walk through. Oh, okay. So let's see. Um, Sorry, I'm also getting a bit tired, but uh, it's okay. We're gonna do this part one. Maybe we'll finish part two tomorrow, unless we just get it uh, quite fast. Okay, uh, so let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It would be very nice if we had just indices, but we wanna kind of stream it. So window. Okay, so we have X, Y, Z. Um, rest. Okay, then we are gonna do. Um, Okay, so we're gonna say actually so solve first. Uh, let's just x comma y is equal to uh, solve line, and then it's just x one and. Um, Map symbol logs a x comma y. Okay, this is our first function. So window x y z rest is equal to. Um, so we assume we solve that. So that's is gonna be solve line y, and then we look at the functions in. Order map symbol. So solve line y. Um, it's just it's just this empty list. Okay, it's not even that. So this is gonna be a solve line and then map simple logs. Uh, X Y Z. Is it gonna be concat map? Concat map. And this concatenated with solve window y uh, y z rest. Okay, and then we're gonna do solve window. So this is gonna be the last one uh, x comma y solve line y. Concat map symbol ropes x comma y. Okay, um, and yeah, let's actually make this. We're solving, and we're gonna do a uh, is equal to solve x, y, z. X, Y, rest. This is equal to solve first. X, Y. Concatenate it uh, with a solve window. Uh, home. Home. Okay. 
Uh, okay. Where? Like this. Let's see. Uh, print solve. Example. 51. I think I just need a more parenthesis here. Okay, so symbol logs takes a resolve, takes a list of strings, and returns a list of list of ints. Uh, it just returns a list of ints. Okay, um, symbol logs parse line. Line takes a list of takes a string actually and returns a list of int comma int comma int. Could match expression uh, saw window. Okay. Line 55, solve window, x, y, z, rest, list of, list of strings to a list of ints. Couldn't my exact type char with why is y a char here? Ah, uh, had too many parentheses. Okay, couldn't so solve line, solve window. Fifty two. What is it doing there? Solve line. Yep, yeah, okay, this just has to be X. Thirty five, six eight three, six six four, five nine eight. Six six four five nine eight. Uh, hmm. Ah, uh, okay. It's because um. So the so the one in the current line, it has to it has to do a bit differently. Okay. Um, okay. So then we have to say. We just have to we have to specify like which one is the current line. Okay, um, we just do X like symbol, we just do it. We're parsing it a lot of times, but it's okay. Symbol logs X, um, map symbol. <laughs> logs, um, X comma Y. Just Y. Okay. 
So then we so solve line. So these are the ones. So same ln sims and other ln sims. Okay, um, so it worked for uh, so touches same line. So this is basically if uh, SI is equal to and s minus one or si is equal to any plus one um okay so then i just want to concatenate um and I want to say filter and okay and then we just say touch the same line any F Let's do it like this map touches other than sims. Okay, so solve window. So this is just solve line, and this is uh, just. Uh, And then this is why did I concat map there? Oh, I think I need to do that. Okay, let's see. So now it catches 617. Let's see. Uh, Tor numbers are not part numbers because they are not adjacent to a symbol. 114, top right. Uh, oh. Okay, so. So this one is actually because it's adjacent like this, like to. Okay. So we just have to. Yeah. We didn't need to do this at all. We just. Uh, we just have this here. Okay. Uh, Because it can touch, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's just uh... okay, uh, whatever. X,
Okay, four six seven one one four is not there. Thirty five sixty three six one seven. Fifty eight is not there. Five nine two is there. Seven five five is there. Six six four. Okay. And then um, this is actually a sum. Okay. Four three six one. Yes. Okay, now we get the puzzle input. E. That's a lot of symbols. Let's see what happens. Um, print, read file, put, print, dot, so, lines. Let's see. <sighs> All right. Boom. Day three, part one done. That took a long time. Let's see if we can finish part two. Okay. Uh, okay. Like here is any star symbol that is adjacent to exactly two part numbers. Oh my god. Okay, uh, let's see. Then it's not enough to... Then it's not enough to just do it like this. You can see, during the broadcast, my hair gets more frazzled. Anyway, uh, there are two gears. We're gonna get there. We are going to get there. I think we'll give it another. I'll finish this part. I think, uh, I, think I know how to do it. So, now, instead of just... Um, So now we are gonna. So the touches here is correct. Um, we're just gonna. We're gonna add to all the. We're gonna like identify the symbols. Oh. Thanks for the follow. WWVWV man. That is a lot. I'm not gonna say all that. Well, I guess it's pronounced. You should let the. Microsoft Sam tested out. Okay, so now um, we are going to just uh, I'm going to uh, let's see I am going to uh, let's see, this was part one. We're doing part two. We are going to add an identifier to each line. So 
So, uh, x y rest is equal to sip. Okay, and now we are going to we're going to write solve line two, and uh, okay, it's actually correct this way. So concat map symbol logs x y. Except um, let's see. I was editing the this one, which I should not have been doing. Um, so two. Let's see. I don't use the saw line anywhere else, so I'm just gonna move it into the definition here. Let's see if this still compiles. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a... I just need some a uh, little bit more space. I need a bit more... Uh, let me see. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add an identifier and then we're going to like... We're gonna take fiddle with it. I take personal offense. Yeah, I just like concat map because we're actually using lists. We're concatting and mapping. Uh, we could so concat map is actually the bind operator on lists. Uh, see and then if we look at uh, concat map at uh, and then You see how it's just the same function, but flipped. But, uh, yeah, I like it. Because it's actually telling us what it's doing. Anyway. Uh, it's fine. Okay. I also, I don't want to make it too complicated, right? Hey, Fabian. Nice to meet you. Solve one. Now we're doing solve two. And we're just going to take in the hole here. And we are going to say that x, y, uh, that x, that x, y, rest is equal to sip with home. So we're just going to add an identifier to every line. And um, let's see. So now, so symbol logs, uh, we're going to modify it a bit. So s logs prime is equal to so this is going to take an identifier and a line and we are going to map to symbol logs of x's okay and so now we use symbol logs prime everywhere let's see if it compiles 
Um, and defined. Okay, let's see. Solve window. Takes in int string and returns int int right expected int string to int actual right and that's just because I have the wrong um, Type here int comma int now that identifier like the line number doesn't matter here. is also going to be an int parse line second okay so what are we going to try to do we're going to try and So for so instead of multiplying the numbers in the end, we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna return the uh, we're gonna try and return. So we need to figure out which ones are stars first of all. Uh, second gear is in the lower right. Its gear ratio is four. Five one four nine zero. The star. So now we don't care about all the symbols. We just care about uh, the the ones that are stars. Okay. Um. Uh, let's see. Symbol logs x x is. Let's see. So symbol looks hmm. Let's just write here find indices equals star So those are the gear looks, okay? We're actually going to call this like this, and then So now we've found all the stars and we have the identifier for them. And because we don't want to mix up uh, the identifiers. Okay. So now we are in the So how to so, so, so solve each line 
we are going to uh, so this is a list of it's okay so So here we're just going to return a number and uh, which symbols it touched. Okay, so uh, we have the numbers which are these, um, you know, with the start and the end location. Okay, so, and then for each number, let's actually, I'm going to use the 4M here. Uh, So let's see, uh, we don't care about this, so for the numbers, we're going to do, uh, so for each number, uh, we are going to Take all the symbols. We're going to say filter uh, flip touches sins. Flip touches and sims. Okay, so then we have a list of symbols which uh, touch and then so we're going to say case of. So if this was empty, then we just return empty. We're not going to do anything with that number. Otherwise, we are going to say a uh, map n Let's say here I We're gonna uh, This is value actually so the value of the number Otherwise, uh, otherwise, we could also just say null here, but okay. Otherwise, um, we're just going to return v, comma, uh, uh, touching sims v. Sims. Okay, let me see if this type checks. Uh, let's actually just say yes. Okay, because we need we need the result also. Ah, uh, okay. No, we are just going to say V. We're just going to filter it out later. Okay, let's see here. 
Uh, so solve line, okay, and then filter not null a second. Okay, and Let's see, we're not going to do some, but we're going to say concat. I just want to see what this says here. If it even type checks. Why did I copy this here? I was going to change it, but I changed the name. Okay. <laughs> hmm. It doesn't like me saying this. Why? Illegal type, ah, uh, yeah, okay, because it's a list of pairs of ints, not... Data dot traversable. Four is, by the way, just, uh, it's just traverse. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, let's see. Four is supposed to take a takes a list of nums. And then A that to a sum to a list and then uh, let's see here. Um F Equals waf comma F takes in this one of those number of things. Uh, because it doesn't return a functor, right? So I want it to just return Okay, then we just do map, right? Map F nums. Um, and this is because um,
type of notation here isn't wrong. Okay, so it's returning the right, uh, it's returning for each number which gear is touching it. Okay, so, um, concat and then filter. Right, so here I want to say filter not that null, no, no, doesn't do. Okay, uh, so now I just need to basically flip this data structure. So these are where the So seven five five and five nine eight. Why are they not? Uh... Yeah. Okay. There are two gears. Okay. Good. So now I have to flip this data structure. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let me see. Okay, we're just making a map. Um, import data dot map dot strict. Qualified map import data dot map dot strict. <sighs> okay, and then we're gonna um, we're gonna create the map with all of them. Um, so we're gonna say. We're going to fold L. Uh, map. Uh, Map.empty. Okay. Uh, and now this is going to be a map of uh, these gear identifiers to a list of numbers. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so we're uh, we're helping them figure out some gears. Uh, so we were trying to do. So first, we had to find all the numbers that were adjacent to a symbol, and then multiply them together. But now we're only looking at numbers that are adjacent to stars, um, and only there's only going to be two of them. Exactly two, right? So now we're gonna 
you know, we, we f so we found all the numbers and we found which star they're connected to. So now we're going to flip it uh, and say, we're going to say for each star, we're going to say what numbers they're connected to. Uh, and then add to map. So this fold L to map, I never remember the type of fold L. Um, GTI. No. Fold L. I should actually have fold R here, probably. Fold R. Uh, so it's gonna be, this is gonna be, um, int. And uh, this is gonna be the um, map int, comma int, list of ints. And we're going to return a map of int, comma int to list of int. Add to map. Okay, so uh, this is going to be v uh, keys. Okay, so first of all, we're just going to say. Um, where nm is equal to meta from list uh, sip keys repeat v okay so now we have the and then we're just gonna old map now we have to say map a b map a b map a b uh, i think it's just called union with exactly so um so this is going to be a union with comb a new map old map old map new map where uh, comb uh yeah union with so comb uh, x is yeah, so we're just gonna concatenate the two lists. Let's just see. So this can actually just be um, union with of ah uh, uh, no. Let's let's just keep it like this. Okay, uh, let's see what this gives us now. Oh my god. This is very annoying. A uh, install lib containers. So I'm running this on a new uh, machine. And if you do GT up, like containers are not like there by default, not exposed globally. Uh, so I have to install them like this. Let's see. Do, 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 do. I kind of thought that the list was in containers. Apparently not. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
I specifically tried this with int map, so like uh... oh, okay, apparently I did not. Maybe I was using some other. Turn off these settings. Do 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 do. I think I was using another GC version, which is why it worked then, but not now. But anyway, uh, so it should. And we just need to find the keys where there are exactly two. It's not just Cabal Hell, like why is it taking so long to build containers? I don't understand. Okay. Uh, oh, this is also not correct. So now we have the uh, comp map. So we have the combined map. And now let's uh, filter the map. We say map.filter comb map uh, and we say a m basically value a length v equals two and then okay now we have containers actually Ah. Ah, this is dot union with. Yeah, that is true, Oscar. Ding ding. Okay. See, now we have the two gears and the two parts that it touches. And we filtered out the ones that had length exactly two. And then we just have to uh, Okay, so now we just have to get uh, map.keys here, right? Uh, no, we get to map.values is the old input. Uh, I think it's just the I think it's Let me just go to Google again. Map K A to list of A LMs. 
Okay. Map dot LMs. Um, there's gonna be a list of in, so we're gonna map product. So we're gonna take the sum of the map of product of these. Okay, what is it? What does it give now? This should be a list of list of ints. Okay, and then if I do Okay, I just wrote something wrong Right Four six seven eight three five, which is exactly here. Now, truth. Thirty-three milliseconds. Not bad. Is it correct, though? Yes. We finished day one, day two, day three. Took us two hours and a half or 45 minutes, which is slightly longer than I had said. I had said I would do it in, well, I was gonna two days and two hours and we did do that uh, in an hour and a half. But now we'd finished day three and uh, yeah, so the chatter online is that it's very hard these first ones like it's it's harder than regular So I'm not sure we're gonna do four and five and six all tomorrow But you know, hopefully two days We're always you know, we did three today. So we are catching up Day five is a toughie Oof. Okay, so we do day four maybe half of day five but we're gonna catch up eventually. We have the weekend also. We can do a little bit longer then. Anyway, three days of end of the code. Uh, I'll upload this to YouTube. Yeah. And that one will be correct. But the video on demand of this one will be missing sound for day one. Um, but only music. So, anyway. Thanks for tuning in. See you tomorrow. Um, huh. Today was very easy. Okay, cool. So maybe, you know, we finish. Yeah. So we have, maybe we do four, five, four and five, and then we can do six and seven and eight all at once. Somehow. Let's see. But tune in tomorrow again, eight o'clock. And uh, let's see how it goes. But I think we had a lot of fun. We were... Uh, I mean, we didn't like go too much over the solutions. But I think this one was nice because I tried to hard code it. Really hard code it in the beginning, but then we could... We, we made it work. Uh, but it's alright. Alright, thanks again for tuning in. Click that follow button if you want to get notified. But I'll also tweet it out or uh, and have fun. All right. Thanks for today. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye-bye. Uh,